Thanks so much, Erica and Matt. It's absolutely awesome to see all the new experiences coming into Workspace. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the live q and I'm Katie. And I'm Javier. So excited to see all of you and engage with all of you today. Absolutely. And before we start, just a reminder, this is an absolutely live Q&A, and that means you can engage with us directly. So please ask questions in the chat, tell us where you're from, we would love to hear from you. And if you can't, just go back to the next event website and click on the blue button that says join the interactive experience and you'll be all set. So to get this going, let's go ahead and start with a poll and see who we've got together today. Let's do it. All right. So we want to hear, what's your role at work? Do you work in the IT department? Are you a developer? Are you a person who uses workspace just in the process of your daily work or something else entirely? Let us know in the chat. All right, Javier, while we wait for those results, why don't you answer a question for us? Let's do it. Tell us, what are you most excited about in workspace these days? Well, I'm excited about the pace at which we're delivering some amazing new capabilities for people. But I'm most excited about the way we're bringing the workspace products closer together and helping people be that much more effective at getting their work done, collaborating with their colleagues, uh, uh, building documents, basically coming, t translating ideas and turning them into reality by using our products. It's very exciting and we can't wait for all the stuff that we're going to come out with this year and next. Absolutely. And I feel like as I've seen the chats coming in, customers are talking about examples of how they're using Workspace, how they're going to use some of the new app sheet innovation mm -hmm. in Gmail. So it's really exciting. Okay, our poll results have come back in and it looks like, do you want to read the yeah. results? Um, well, it looks like we have pretty even split between our IT uh, folks and developers, which is great and consistent with like one of the key, there's a lot of great content for all of you uh, uh, at Next. Uh, and then we also have a, a healthy portion of end users and uh, other folks. So uh, widening the audience, trying to make this, uh, this a highly relevant topic for a lot of people, not just technology yeah. professionals. People use this every day. So I'm excited to see this many people. Absolutely. All right, let's jump in with our first question. Let's do it. It comes from Lucy, who says, I saw the news about the new Work Safer program. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Sure. Thank you for the question, Lucy. So uh, we're announcing Work Safer uh, as a way to bring the best of Google Workspace and of Google Cloud security together to help companies rise to this growing threat of uh, cybersecurity incidents, et cetera. And so it brings together Google Workspace with some exciting innovation from our security team. And for those customers that have uh, broader, more diverse environments, we've partnered with two of the best names in the security business, Palo Alto Networks and CrowdStrike, to create a complete solution for these companies to be able to uh, remain secure in a much more challenging environment. That's great. That's great to hear, kind of an all-in-one solution. Yep. All right. Let's move on to question number two. Uh, and this one's going to be for Erica. Um, and it comes from Michael at Sephiron, who asks, is it hard to collaborate if members are using different platforms to join? Uh, for example, he's running off of Google's tool set, but has a partner who's using a different platform. Yeah, this is a really important question, Michael. Thank you for that. I think you, the reality is that we live in a world where, the, where there's different sets of, of products that you or your partners or your customers are going to be using. And it's fundamental to you know, our, our way of viewing the world that, that workspace should not be a walled garden. It should integrate. It should um, connect and make those uh, those tasks easier for you. So on the, on the drive doc sheet slides side, we invest really deeply in making uh, interoperability with Microsoft in particular totally seamless and, uh, um, and very easy to, to use. So for example, you can open up Microsoft documents in the Google editor and have the full interactive experience. Those changes will be saved back to your Microsoft document, including comments. Uh, all of those changes are updated in real time. But there's also a really important third party compatibility component, um, which I would love for my colleague Matt to, to discuss. Yeah, it's uh, fundamental to us that whether using tools which interoperate with the workspace uh, suite or uh, things which complement uh, the types of functionality that we offer, that these all work together. 
Uh, I'll pick one example. We recently uh, uh, announced uh, our new partnership with uh, Miro, uh, which is a company that does uh, virtual whiteboarding or, or collaborative canvassing. Uh, and you can imagine that as you're working with that tool set, uh, not only are you building things on your virtual canvas, but you're scheduling meetings. Uh, you're holding meetings at which you want to collaborate uh, in real time while changing things uh, within that tool. Uh, and so what we are doing is making it really easy for you to schedule a meeting in calendar, join a meeting in Meet, and at the same time be working in your uh, uh, Miro whiteboard. Uh, so yes, we believe very strongly that all these things should work better together. Uh, the workspace and partners delivers a really great experience for our customers and users. That's great, thank you. All right, our next question comes from Bam Bang, who's uh, with Chandra Osri and asks, must we have or use Gmail or company email for uh, using the rest of Google Cloud and workspace? And I think Erica, this is probably um, one for you. Um, sure. Yeah, happy to take that. We have tailored offerings that don't require you to migrate email. So Workspace Essentials is, is perfect for that. It, it includes the Workspace uh, product set, but without email, so it integrates easily. Um, and we also have deep interoperability with uh, Outlook and Calendar. Got it, great. Javier, we're gonna move to you next. Okay. And the question comes from Hannah. And Hannah says that uh, her team loves new features, like being able to jump right into a meet from a doc. Mm -hmm. And is wondering, will integrations like that be extended to other apps inside Workspace? Yes, in fact, we're very excited to uh, continue to advance the opportunity of bringing, you know, to start actually from the real-time collaborative experience that Google Docs pioneered now actually 15 years ago. I think yesterday was our 15th birthday. Yeah. One more and we can drive. Um, <laughs> and uh, be able to allow users to go from working uh, in real time with others in a document to easily getting into a live video feed where you can hear and see each other. Um, and sort of that progression, I guess, is really important part of ensuring seamless collaboration. And it applies, we see, to both our own editors as well as, as Matt mentioned, uh, third parties over time. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Makes sense. Well, we're going to stay with you, Javier, for okay. this next question, which okay. comes from Carter, uh, who says, my company uses a lot of point solutions, like Zoom and Slack, in addition to having Microsoft and Google licenses. So what would you say is the argument for consolidating? Well, look, uh, one of the strongest aspects of Google Workspace is the element of choice, the choice that users make, billions of users have made, to select individual products for key roles in their lives, at work, et cetera. And so we're guided as we refine these products by that sense of uh, affinity that people have to the approach that we bring. That approach um, is best expressed and, and, and nurtured, I think, through deeper and better integration between our products to create something that's ultimately net new. And at the same time, we recognize that there are other companies around us in this vibrant ecosystem of ours that offer different points of view and different aspects of what we also provide. And we believe that there's ample opportunity uh, for users to make an informed choice uh, and really recognize it comes down to familiarity uh, with the product, the sense of security that you get from an integrated solution and ultimately the cost. So uh, it's a choice everyone makes and over time we feel really good about the continued growth of our ecosystem. That's great, that's great, thank you. Erica, we're coming back to you with a question from Miles, who asks, how do you plan to win over diehard fans of Excel and other Microsoft creation tools? All right, a good challenging question from Miles. Uh, well, uh, as, as Javier said, we, we introduced Docs and Sheets about 15 years ago, and that fundamentally rethought what a file should be. Our belief is that these experiences need to leverage the best that the internet has to offer, so interactivity, connectivity and data uh, and and they shouldn't just be a physical a digital representation of a physical piece of paper that lives on your hard drive and that's in stark contrast to the mental model that you know legacy solutions have evolved from over the years we've invested a ton in user experience and making this incredibly easy to adopt and um, and the great thing is that all of this ease of use which billions of people take advantage of is has Google security you know enmeshed and underpinning the whole experience. I would call out a couple of um, features that I hope people are aware of, but if they're not, they should be. So connected sheets, for example, if you weren't aware, allows sheets users to analyze billions of rows of data 
yes, billions in a single sheet. So that really pushes the envelope for what a productivity tool can do. And um, our innovation around Smart Canvas, which really supercharges interactivity, intelligence, and connection to rich data in the form of these modular building blocks that transcend the file boundaries. So we bring in uh, smart chips that bring rich information about people, events, files, uh, templates. We have tables and task lists. All of that really further enhances what, um, what these files should be. So what I would say is for any of the Microsoft, diehard Microsoft fans, we would love uh, to give you a tour, and I bet we could change your mind. Got it. Great. Thanks, Erica. All right, Javier, we're coming to you next uh, with a question from Juliet, who comments that there have been a lot of security breaches lately in the news. And what are we doing from a workspace perspective to protect customers from these sorts of attacks? Well, look, it's a great question, and uh, thank you uh, uh, for the question. A lot of these attacks originate from the, uh, uh, the architecture and habits that went along with legacy products, right? The sharing models, the approach for storing content, the reliance on uh, uh, heavy, powerful clients that, that store a lot of information locally on them but don't necessarily provide the best degree of security. Google Workspace was born in a different era and has had, since the very beginning, a different point of view about the design and the approach to security uh, and it comes, I guess, as part of us being uh, cloud only, right? Like we, we grew up and were architected for a, the, the distributed world in which we live in now. And it is the reason behind why our products are so effective. So we've continued to invest around that to make it even clearer how, along with enhancements and innovative capabilities from Google Cloud Security, like Beyond Corp, uh, uh, et cetera, we, we establish a completely different model for securing content while ensuring the absolute best and most effective level of collaboration with, within a company and beyond a company, so externally with other third parties, et cetera, and partners. Absolutely, so it's really architected for, to be safe in this world. Yes, yes, and actually, look, it, it, you mentioned this idea of habits, right? Like these, uh, um, the notion of attachments, right? Like the model that people uh, grew up with, uh, uh, you know, it, when productivity tools, digital productivity tools were, were first introduced, um, is the main vector through which a lot of these ransomware and other uh, terrible things tend to heart, uh, start, right? Um, somebody, you know, either opens an email, like a phishing attempt or a malicious attachment, something that gets spread through, you know, various different tools that people are used to using. And companies are really desperate to say, how do we actually put a stop to this? And by the way, can we do that in a way that actually uh, uh, works us towards a, a sense of transformation in our company. So it's not just about securing your communication and collaboration, but ultimately taking that full opportunity to make it more effective at the same time. So it's pretty exciting. Yeah, it is exciting. And you know, you have been working in this space for so long. You mentioned the legacy tools and you know, from Accompli to you know, work at different companies, You've been so focused on the productivity market. What have you learned across those different experiences and different products that is most important and the knowledge that, that you use today? Well, listen, I think the, the most honest answer to that question, uh, and it may surprise some of you, is, is you can't please everybody, right? <laughs> um, you're building products that play these very crucial roles in people's personal lives, at school, at work, and part of their power is that they are horizontal in nature. They allow people, they're, they're uh, canvases for creation, articulation of ideas, et cetera. And so you have to be very uh, careful and deliberate about the process you use to evolve those products. And so as I mentioned earlier, you know, we, we began our, our journey as Google in the collaboration space in a very particular point in time um, where it allowed us to have a different point of view, a more modern approach um, and an, an, an eye towards simplicity that didn't undermine the sophistication and power of the products that we were doing. That's what we are really strongest at. And so as a result, the, the task of evolving those opinions in products like Docs or Sheets or Gmail or Meet, any one of these products, they are the representation of a point of view that Google is bringing, um, that customers are actually informing um, and helping us uh, refine over time. But it ultimately requires that we really understand what it is 
that we believe the right result is for our customers. And that may mean in some cases that these products are, are uniquely powerful for key scenarios and are not necessarily just like something that uh, uh, can be used for, every, they're not multi-tools, right? Um, so it's a really exciting and challenging journey for us. Absolutely. And having that strong point of view, it's a great opportunity to get feedback from all the customers who are living, listening now. Yeah. Please share your feedback in the chat. We want to hear from you. All right. We have another question. It's coming in from John, and it's going to be for Matt. And John asks, what are you doing to encourage developers and ISVs to build for workspace? Yeah, thanks for asking the question. Um, I know we talk a lot about customers and users, but at the heart of a successful platform is developers. Uh, and so what makes a developer want to build on the platform? Uh, let's start with our open philosophy. Uh, Google as a company for a long time has believed in the openness of data, the openness of access to platform, and that extends to workspace. Uh, we built an extensive uh, set of APIs and frameworks and they are completely open. You can go build something today, right now. Secondly is reach. Uh, if you are building something on a platform, you want an audience, right? You want to build a business on a platform. You want to have success. Your customers have success. Uh, and we have, our, our workspace certainly has a lot of reach. We talk about 3 billion users and millions of paying businesses and paying customers. Uh, this is fundamental for why you want to be on the workspace platform. Uh, finally, I mentioned APIs and frameworks. We've put a lot of effort into, and we continue to put a lot of effort into making sure that they are easy to use and easy to build on. When I say easy to use, I mean from a developer point of view, it shouldn't take you months and months of trying to deduce how something works from poorly written documentation. Rather, it should be something that you could you know, build up a prototype in an afternoon. Uh, and we believe we have made it that way for you. Uh, and finally, you've seen a lot of logos on our slides uh, today and, and some of our discussion points today. Uh, these are really proof points, Atlassian, Miro, DocuSign, uh, of the success our partners are having and the fact that we believe in being better together. Absolutely. Thanks, Matt. Okay, Javier, we're coming back to you okay. with a question from Laura. Hello, Laura. Yes. Laura is asking, with COVID still keeping a lot of companies remote, mm -hmm. what is Google and Google Workspace team doing to offset the difficulties of distributed work? A lot is the <laughs> honest, simplest answer. Um, now, look, I think uh, uh, there's a, uh, a, it's a two-part answer. For, from one side, as an organization, uh, we, we have to listen to people. We have to get feedback from employees. We've learned a lot uh, uh, from each other and about the different situations that our employees uh, 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 have to face on a daily basis. It's informed our point of view, as I mentioned earlier, this idea of having an opinion, we, we know that, that just because work doesn't take place in a specific named location anymore, that there aren't like a whole host of new problems and opportunities that you have to address, not just with products, by the way, but also with policies that a company uh, adopts, like recovery days and a home office stipend, et cetera. Now, from a product perspective, we have this incredible opportunity to channel those learnings along with the input that we get from our customers from around the world and even our users to say, how are we helping and how can we be more helpful, I guess, in, in such a broad, uh, uh, uniform sense of the word by helping people not just uh, uh, use these products but be successful with them. Um, and again, this involves a whole lot of listening uh, which is why I'm great to have its, you know, the uh, dynamic experience here with Cloud Next, and also all these great conversations with users and customers that we've been having uh, everywhere. Um, so, you know, there's it's a it's a never-ending task. Absolutely, two across two parts, the org yeah. and the product. That's right. Yeah. That's right. All right. Well, it looks like we are out of time. So, I'd like to. Thank everyone for joining us today, and a huge thank you to Javier, Erica, and Matt. And thank you, Katie. Of course. It's great to be here all together. Thank you, everyone online, for joining in today. And I'd like to remind you that even though we finished the live Q&A, the day is not over yet. And there's actually another great session that's about to begin shortly, and it's from our own Chief Diversity Officer, Melanie Parker, who's going to be leading a DEI Spotlight session that talks about the importance of STEM and creating pathways to jobs in tech. It's a really important topic, and I hope you all tune in to check it out. The details are on the next website. 
Thanks so much for joining us. Bye. Thanks, everybody.